Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to do my September wrap-up. My shelves don't look spooky enough, do they? Well, this is better. Oh wait, isn't it Wednesday, October 3rd? Shouldn't I be wearing pink? Well, that's much better. I'm feeling much more myself, much more my Regina George self. <laughs> All right. So after that ridiculous intro, thank you guys so much for staying for that. It is officially the end of September, obviously it's already October 3rd, and I'm getting ready to make my little September wrap up for you guys. This is definitely one of my worst reading months, not gonna lie, I could have done much better, but I kind of found myself in a bit of a reading slump halfway through, and yeah. I still managed to finish seven books, so it's not bad exactly, it's just not what I expected of myself. Well, let's just jump on in. So the first book that I actually finished in the month of September was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I gave this four to five stars. I did really enjoy it. I just found the ending to be a little too fast for all the buildup for it. I think the fight scenes could have used a lot more more in general. I, I wanted to know more about what was going on instead of just kind of skipping through it until the ending. And yeah, I did really enjoy meeting our characters, but I expected just like more action, I guess. So basically A Darker Shade of Magic follows Kel, who is a sort of blood magician called an Antari. And basically by being a blood magician, he is able to travel between the three Londons. And there are three parallel London. There used to be four. The first one being Red, which is the one that Kel lives in and was born in and thrives in. And it is the London that has the most magic, that thrives on magic, that has a great time with magic. They're living their best life. Then we have White London, who's being consumed by their lust for magic. They want more magic. They are doing anything and everything to get more magic, and it is killing them. They are becoming very corrupt and... I mean, I guess we'll see where that goes. And then there's Grey London, which has next to no magic at all. And there used to be Black London, which is probably the London that had the most magic and then let the magic consume them until they had to close off all the doors to the parallel Londons so that now only Antari like Kel can get through them. We also follow Lila Bard, who is just awesome. She is this amazing Grey Londoner and she she has just such a mysterious quality about her. She's so badass. She will do anything to get her way and I just I, I idolize her so yeah. The next book that I read this month was The Exiled Queen by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the second book in the Seven Realms quartet and I, I loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. I've been really loving this series. I listened to this on audiobook as I've been doing with all the other books and I really enjoy it on audio. This story follows Han Alistair who is a street rat but also a traitor and he is just trying to do everything to make some money for his family because his family isn't doing be the best right now. And we also follow Princess Reza who is the to her queendom in which Han lives and she is just full of sass she is just she wants to live life to its fullest and she wants to experience everything there is to experience before she will eventually have to take the throne and we know that their storylines are gonna mix in the beginning we just don't know how and it's just so much fun to read it's a very politically driven story there's a lot to do with politics there's a fantastic magic system and wizards and limitations and there's so many fun inner workings between the clans, the queendom, and the wizards and it's just, it's, it's, it's really great. I highly recommend this, especially if you want to get into a gritty and thorough fantasy right in time for fall. Next up I read The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. I actually listened to this on audiobook as well and I give it five out of five stars. This book was not what I'd expected at all. I mean, it was in a way. I knew that it was going to be discussing rape culture and sort of everything that goes along with it. I just didn't expect the way that it would. So basically, this story starts with Alex's sister being abducted and then brutally raped and murdered until her body is found later on in the woods. And her killer is he's let loose. He gets away with the murder, the rape, everything. And so we start by following Alex, who has taken it upon herself to serve some justice. She is sort of a vigilante throughout this book, and I kind of loved it. But yeah, she takes it upon herself to kill her sister's murderer. 
We also follow PK, who is the preacher's kid. She's just trying to figure things out. She, uh, we don't even really know her name for most of the thing because everyone calls her PK, P preacher's kid, which was really rude. But she has a bit of a drinking problem. She's just trying to get over the breakup between her and her boyfriend. And then we also follow, what's his name? We also follow Jack Fisher, who is this I mean, he's like that all-American boy. He's in line to be valedictorian, he's like a football guy, he's super hot, and he's just really nice too, like, he's the whole package. It's a really interesting story. It does, I think, tackle just stereotypes and uh, just ingrained notions that like it's okay to do certain things and call people certain things and slut shame and all that stuff. and. Alex has a very strong stance against all of it, and she does make a stand, obviously, not just by killing people, but by also talking to people, or not talking, but like yelling at people when they go with these pre-regulated notions. So I did really enjoy it. It's super fun. It's very thrillery, but also like, hey, this is kind of cool. So yeah. Next up, I listened to The Grey Wolf Throne by Cinder Williams Chima on audio, and this is the third book in the Seven Realms quartet. I already gave you a bit of a summary. I can't really tell you much about this one or I'll ruin like everything, but just know it's still fantastic. Also, it took a while, but Han and Rey's storylines have finally kind of actually collided, so I'm I, this was great. I give it four to five stars though. I did find this one a lot slower. I felt that it had middle book syndrome and even though it was still fantastic, I just didn't think it lived up to the first two books, but I'm so excited to get to Crimson Crown, which is the fourth and final book in this series. After that, I read The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This is another book that actually tackles rape culture. It follows Edie after she is raped by her brother's best friend. It goes through her four years of high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, as she is really dealing with the trauma and still trying to find herself and just move past the very traumatic night that she has never talked about. So it was very, very, very hard hitting. It was brutal. It was, it goes very much into detail into what happened that night and just also like, Edie's sort of downfall after and it was very tragic and awful to read but it was so important and fantastic and I loved 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 the ending and I just feel like uh, from what I know I think this would have been this seems like a very accurate representation I've also heard from like other booktubers that this is a very accurate representation so if you were looking sort of for like the female of the species but more accurate and maybe a little bit more about rape culture rather than thrillery murder stuff, I definitely would go with the way I used to be. I actually like this book even more than The Female of the, the Species, and I give it five out of five stars. I don't know if I mentioned that already. It was fantastic. So good. Read it. And like obviously major trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape and drugs and uh, just a whole bunch of stuff actually. So I would look it up first if you are a little worried about it. After that, I read A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This is the second book in a Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, and I read this because obviously Spence over at Common Spence is ha hosting his A Darker Shade of Magic read-along, and I was one of the hosts for this month's books, and I had such a good time. It was such a great experience. Uh, first of all, this book was fantastic. I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy it and I felt like the ending was perfect. I, I could not imagine not having the third book on deck. The third book on deck. Having the third book on deck. With reading that ending. Oh, my, my tabbies are still in there, okay. Uh, but it was just, it was really fantastic. I am really loving this series and I loved the magic in this one. I think they went a lot more in depth with the magic and there's like a really cool game. I could definitely see how people say they got Harry Potter vibes from this because like, I can see it, but overall it was just so good. I love getting to know Lila and Kel just a little bit more and also Rise. Uh, they're just so much more complex. Overall, I definitely did enjoy this one more than the first one, but I can't wait to see A Conjuring of Light because I feel like that one's gonna be the one that I actually give five stars. So yeah. Also the, uh, the live show for the last book, I believe, is going to be on October 27th, so I'm definitely going to be tuning in, and if you guys have read it or you guys are going to be reading it, 
tune in too because it was so much fun last time. It was my first experience with a live show and it was just and the last book that I finished this month was Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I actually gave this 3 out of 5 stars, and that's a pretty low rating for me. <laughs> I normally love books, so when I give a book under 4 stars, that's like bad. But it's not awful, it's just one of those things where I had a lot of issues with this overall, because I expected more from it after Daughter of the Pirate King. I just think that Trisha Levenseller tried to do a lot with a very short amount of space and I don't think she really delved into the parts that I was very interested in. Um, she had... I thought that the dialogue was very cheesy and unrealistic. I also was not a fan of the romance, which I've been finding more and more lately that I haven't been a huge fan of romance in books lately, but this one was particularly bad. It just felt so rushed and I felt nothing for it, like absolutely nothing. It was the weirdest thing for me. I also really wish that we could have learned more about Sirens because that was the only part of this book that I think was done really fantastically and I kind of want an entire book on just the Siren community and things like that. So yeah, three out of five stars. It was still really good. I don't want you to like, I mean really good. I still really enjoyed the plot. I still really love Alosa as a character, so yeah. Basically this series, this duology, I think it's only two books, is about Captain Alosa, who is the captain of an all-female pirate crew. She's also the daughter of the Pirate King, and in the first book we see her <sighs> tricking a ship into taking her captive so that she can get on board and steal something from them. And it's just really great. Obviously, Daughter of the Siren Queen. Someone's the Daughter of the Siren Queen. And we get to explore uh, just siren abilities. And I think it's really, really cool in this book. So that was awesome. Yeah. Okay, those are all the books that I read in the month of September. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them. And let me know how many books you finished in September because I'd love to know. Please uh, make me feel a little better about having like not that great of a reading month. But also if you read up a ton, like that's fantastic. I'm really proud of you, so yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna get going. I make videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays most of the time. And I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you in my next one. Bye.